Welcome to Awaken Aware. It is Sunday, December 13th, and I'm Nick Angel, and this is the Awaken Aware show. I'm happy to have you guys. Nice. So we definitely have uh, some people joining us today. Um, today's kind of a special day. Um, we're right in the middle of two eclipses. Um, and so we had a, a lunar eclipse this early, the last weekend and coming up on Tuesday morning, we're going to have a solar eclipse. So, and then we're also going to have uh, a conjunction with the big old planet, um, Jupiter this week. So there's all kinds of crazy things going on in the heavens. And, uh, I'm glad to be joined by you and glad to, uh, host the show tonight. Tonight we have a special guest We're gonna have Amanda Meyer on the show with us tonight. And, um, she is a number one selling author of Breakthrough Success and a longtime friend of mine and an absolute amazing entrepreneur and somebody I look up to and I'm happy to share uh, some of her tips and her life story with you guys tonight. Um, also, let's see, I've got some other cool things too. I got a joke to tell you guys that I've been, uh, let's see here, just a second, let me find this joke. See if Amanda, if I can get you to mute your mic, show a little feedback from you. There we go. All right, so let's jump to this joke that I got for you guys because I thought it was pretty funny. Um, how many times do you have to tickle an octopus to make it laugh? Bet you think you know the answer. It's 10 tickles, right? Of course, it only has eight of those. So the first two were testicles. <laughs> Test tickles. Yeah, all right. So go, we're going to go ahead and uh, start the show here. I'm up. All right. So if you're just joining us, this is the Awaken Aware show. And let's see. We are live. Um, just looking at my little clipboard here to see what I had through. So I just want to let you know what the Awaken Aware show is about. Um, basically, we're here to expand your consciousness, and we are able to do that uh, as a community um, through Agagory, which is our group mind. And uh, that's why we share our tips and our tricks and our, and our life stories and hurdles and things that we're able to overcome hurdles with. Um, so we're here to expand consciousness. And my hope every day is that you, tomorrow you know less than you did today. Not more, no less. I want you to think about that for a minute and I'll tell you how that works. That's right. No less. So if you know less, that means your universe expanded. So if you're, you can't know everything in the universe. So every time you know more about the universe, you know, actually know less because there's more to know. So that is my hopes from watching this show, connecting with all these wonderful people and expanding our minds and expanding our consciousness. And I just want to remind you guys that the definition of consciousness is to be awake and aware of one's surroundings. That is consciousness. All right. So I'm going to introduce uh, our guest. Her name is Amanda Meyer. She's been a friend of mine uh, for, I want to say, almost 17 years. Um bring her into the show here and um let's see here I'm using some new technology so you have to give me just a second and figure out let's see i put the call on hold now how do i unhold the call interesting All right, well, I'm going to have to figure that out while I keep talking. Um, 
Interesting. I guess hold was not the way to go. There we go. Resume. I'm new to Skype, guys, so I have not used Skype in 15 years, so don't be upset with me. Um, so anyhow, I'm going to bring Amanda into the call. Her mic is muted. There we go. And man, I'm going to need you to turn your uh, volume down on the show because I can hear it in the feedback in the feedback loop. Can you hear me? I, we can hear you. Absolutely. How are you? But we can hear, but we can hear the show in the background. So we have this interdimensional loop to our future and our past selves going on right now, which I think is kind of dope. But I, I think the the people yeah, listening, we can hear you. you've got to turn down. If you're watching, you, if you're watching this, whatever you're watching the show on, you have to mute that. Well, I don't know if uh, I don't hear you on my computer, so I'm thinking I may have to just do this from my cell phone. Um, well, what it is, is what, what are you watching the show on? You have it live on your Facebook somewhere, either on your computer or on your phone. You just got to mute whatever that app is. I don't hear you on my computer, so I'm thinking I may have to just do this from my cell phone. Um, well, what it is, is how, what, how about this? Can you hear me now through the computer? Yes, I can. Ah, terrific. <laughs> how about this? Can you hear me now through the computer? Yes, I can. Ah, terrific. Much better. Okay, cool. So, so, uh, I, I promise you guys, Mercury's not in retrograde. That's usually the thing that deals with technology. Let's chop this up to see. This is the first time that, that I've brought somebody into the, the program this way, which is pretty cool. Um, and so we've just worked those kinks out. Now we know how to do this. Fantastic. <laughs> Great. I'm super glad that you're here. Um, so I was just telling everybody. So, yeah, it was a little jumbled up there. So I don't know what you heard or if you heard anything at all. Um, but uh, Amanda and I have been friends for 17 years. We used to work together um, and we have just both taken off in different trajectories for years and just kept climbing and climbing and climbing now she's soaring at the moment and um i'm just super happy to see her and all the stuff that's going on with her and uh we're, we're gonna just jump right in and i'm gonna ask her some questions first off how are you tonight i'm doing wonderful thank you for asking thanks i, I saw you running yesterday to do, doing a 5k yesterday so you're gl you've got that runner's glow right now oh, it was more of a walker's glow but yes we'll, we'll go with that <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I'm not much of a, after getting out of the army, I, I almost do not run. I do the stair climber and um, the elliptical, but that's about the extent. I mean, I, I, I jog for a little while on the, the uh, uh, maybe five minutes at a time, but I am not into running anymore. Yeah, gotcha. Um, so let's see. So you just wrote a book. I did. I co-authored uh, with a very good friend of mine and a mentor of mine, and it was released about a month ago. Wow. It was just, it was released about a month ago and, but, but it did something the same, literally it went number one in, in multiple categories. I mean, not, not within the first few minutes, but very quickly after that, a lot of people were out there to get this book and, and signed up to, and bought it. And I bought three copies of this book from the jump. Um, okay. And I think a lot of people did too. And the, the reason for that is because they wanted to share it with and share Amanda's message. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the book and what the book's about? Absolutely. Well, I've got it right here in front of me. It's uh, Breakthrough Success with Amanda Meyer. And my goal behind it was to be able to reach one person. Because I've learned through life that it takes one domino to tip over the other ones. And I've been through something very traumatic in the last uh, almost two years now. And I thought it would be a great platform uh, for me to build upon it to spread about mental health awareness and suicide prevention. And so... I'm excited about it. I did not expect it to go number one. It actually went number one within 12 hours. I actually went number one before I even launched the book, which was super cool. But then within the first 48 hours, it went number one in two different categories. And one was social and emotional health. So that was really wow. meaningful to me based off of what my goals were. I've never been money motivated. I used to teach second and fourth grade. No one goes into teaching for the money. Really it really is about... Uh, helping others and just teaching others how to step out of their comfort zone and into a life they so well deserve to be destined to live. So. Great. Um, so I had the pleasure of reading through it um, the first night. 
uh, really sank my teeth into it. Um, I, we've mentioned it on the show a couple times. Um, and your story is absolutely amazing. I mean, from even before the time that I met you, I never knew you were a teacher or had that in, had, had that in you. And I, I, I told you before, but thank you for your service. Um, I think teachers are absolutely, they're, they're, they're up there. They're even up above the military, in my opinion, because, uh, um, it's, it takes a real sacrifice and, and just to have that, you know, the, the, any kind of passion to want to be able to teach somebody else and know that it's going to be a struggle and know it's not a high paying yeah. job. At all. <laughs> For sure. No, I appreciate that. And my husband being a military member, I could not do what he does. So we, we uh, I commend all the military members out there and especially you, thank you for your prior service as well. Um, yeah, you know, teaching is funny, funny, not funny. I actually got hazardous pay what? Oh, as a wow. teacher. That, that, that was eye-opening because of all the stuff going on with the world and all the craziness that was going on in the world. So it definitely takes a lot more dedication than we think it does. I, I just was. That. I always wanted to make my my dent in the universe, as Steve Jobs would say. I wanted to mm. make an impression on the world, not for ego centric sake. I remember every single elementary school teacher I ever had growing up, and I believe that we are the most impressionable at that young age. I remember maybe one or two middle school teachers and a handful of high school teachers. So it really takes that special someone that resonates with you and and really makes an impact in your life. And that's all I think we all ever really want to do in this life is to make an impact in a big way and leave it, leave the earth better than where we found it. So that was my, my goal at first. I always knew I wanted to be an educator. I just realized over the last four years that it was meant to be one, just not in the classroom setting. Wow. So thinking back, um, very much elementary school, I went to a diverse school that was just some of the most that we, we had all the way from the gamut of socioeconomic backgrounds and cool. then had every race, walk color. I went to school at elementary school in Providence, Rhode Island, which is the most densely populated city in the whole country. I, I think San Francisco may be now giving it a run for its money, but at the time it was the most densely populated city. Um, and I went to a public school. I, I had a few options to go to private schools, but everybody said the public schools were better and I was grateful for it. But I, but like you said, I can remember every elementary school teacher and yes, they had a huge impact to this day in the way that I think, the way that I, I critically think, and the way that I make decisions. I don't want to say I still make them the same way, <laughs> clearly, but I can see how their influence still still affects me today. So yeah, again, thank you. And thank you for your husband's service. And thank you for being a military wife, because that is, boy, that's, not, that's, that's almost as tough as being in the military, if not more so. It's it is, other with. than having to get up at O Dark 30, which is something he still enjoys doing, not me. <laughs> so I have been, um, I'm, I'm a very balanced poor person. I'm a late night person, but also an early morning person at the same time. And people don't understand how, how I nap. I take a four hour nap every day. <laughs> so I, I do this thing where I actually split my sleep. Um, so I'm usually up till two o'clock, but then I'm back up at 5 a.m. And then I'm up for the rest of the day at eight o'clock. I will take uh, uh, somewhere, you know, two or three hour. And then from 10 to 12, I'm usually or 10 to two, I'm usually up. So it's not always a four hour nap, but sometimes. So I'm uh, very much a night person but very much a morning person. So I, That's I get the it. entrepreneur in you. They say the real hustles, you know, come from being the last one to go to bed and the first one up <laughs> in the morning. And it's when you have a true passion Yes. and you just can't shut your brain off because you're just so excited on what you're doing and how you're evolving as a person. So a lot of times it's hard for me to just turn my brain off. So I suffer from insomnia in that sense, mm -hmm. but I a lot of squirrels running rampant in my head because I do suffer from ADHD. But <laughs> other than that, that's a true uh, entrepreneur spoken. It just means you got a lot of coals in the fire and doing a lot of stuff, right? Absolutely. So uh, every time I look, I seem to look at your social media, you're in a different country. I, Tell me I'm what's going on there. <laughs> so I started my career pretty late. I actually didn't go back to school until I was a thirty. I was thirty-two. When you met me, I was a single parent. And I always wanted to go back to school. I just never really kicked the ball, which is the hardest part to getting anything started. But I knew once I got that ball rolling, I wouldn't quit. And I've, I've always been that way. It's been ingrained in me. So anytime I start something, I don't stop until I see through. 
And I did. It, it took me five years, three months, and blood, sweat, and tears, and time away from my babies to get that degree. I have zero regrets. I'm a big believer in the butterfly effect. If you change one minor detail, it changes everything in your past and in your future. And we're exactly where we are supposed to be, even if you don't realize it at the time. So I ended up starting my schooling when I was 32. I finished when I was about 37. And then I got my dream job at my dream school where my kids were going. And I found myself working 60-hour work weeks. I was being bullied by administration. And I was assuming that God was going to grant me 25 more years to even get to retirement. And it was affecting my, me mentally. It was affecting me physically and spiritually. And I was so broken as a person that I knew that if I didn't do something different, I was never just going to have anything different. And just because you start on one path in life and decide to go down a different route doesn't necessarily mean you're going down the wrong path. I think that there's just so many life decisions that we make and they all lead to where you're supposed to be. So fast forwarding to the travel comment, I got involved in direct sales almost five years ago. I really loved the product side of it. It's a, it was a, a travel club and had been around for 15 years. Um, it wasn't a timeshare. Uh, I was not a travel agent. It was a way for me to travel with my champagne taste on my milk budget. Mm -hmm. And my husband and I fell in love with it because honestly, I want to go to Fiji and my husband didn't want to pay for it. So mm -hmm. we, we joined as members. It gave us an opportunity to travel with and without the children and really just see the world before my mon mantra was see the world before you leave the world. And what ended up happening was I ended up joining the business side of that immediately, even though I didn't see the vision behind it. Some people get an opportunity thrown at them and they catch the vision and they jump all in. I didn't catch the vision immediately only because I was so time broke. I was physically broken. I was financially broke. I was mentally broken. I was time broke. And I knew that five weeks, five months or five years from that point, if I kept doing what I was doing, which is the basic definition of insanity, nothing was going to change. And that's what truly made me grab the reins and, and ride the coattails of my mentor at the time. And because I had so much fun with blessing it forward and sharing the opportunity, because you never know what someone's praying for. I didn't try to play the psychic friend. I ended up replacing my teaching income with the residual income that was coming in. So I fired my boss. I retired 25 years early. And I'm not telling this on the show to impress anybody, just to impress upon you that if you see an opportunity, and I think, I believe it's Richard Branson that says it best, and I quoted it in my book. If someone offers you an opportunity and you're not sure if you can do it, just say yes and figure it out later. Uh, just, just go with your gut because so many people are afraid of failure. For me, I didn't think, what if this didn't work? I started thinking mindset-wise, well, what if this did? So we ended up having a lot of fun with it. My husband says retirement looks good on me. He's got a three to five year plan. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, so you, you are, I heard residual income. I, that means I, I know you've got multiple streams of income because I, I know you're working you, again. You have many, you wear many hats and ha have many pokers in them and many fires and um, you're also an activist and you, you are a, a force to be reckoned with right now in the world and suicide prevention. Uh, Cause I've seen you in multiple places, not even that weren't even just links from you. So I've seen things come back to, to me about you in that air, in that arena. Um, so wh why don't you tell me how you got into what, what, what's going on with you and suicide prevention and how that came into your life? I appreciate you asking me that. It's very therapeutic for me to talk about. A lot of people shy away from the topic, and I really believe that we need to normalize the conversations. And my biggest goal with suicide awareness and prevention and talking about mental health is to allow people to have those uncomfortable conversations and be an advocate for it before it hits home, if it ever does end up hitting home. And unfortunately for me, it did hit home for us. And I'm almost embarrassed to say that if it had not hit home, I don't know how active I would be on the advocacy front. So about 19 months ago, my husband and I were traveling in Prague. It was one of the trips we, we talked about that we'd like to take. And we left our two kids with a family friend who I know, I love, I trust. And he, my son had said that he was going to go get some school supplies. So she let him leave the house, go get school supplies. And then the next thing I know, six hours later, or excuse me, I'm six hours ahead, 
I'm getting a phone call that my son's on the train tracks wanting to end his life. And that was, that was surreal in just that one moment because it was almost like a movie where time, it was warped. It just stopped. It was almost like the things in the room were just moving slowly. Couldn't tell you what I wore yesterday, but I remember every single detail to that evening. And I won't go through all the details, but obviously it didn't end well. We ended up losing my son. Um, I wasn't there to help look for him. There were two canines, half the police department and the entire city of Greenville, South Carolina, out looking for him. And I, I know in my heart there was nothing I could have done or didn't do that was going to stop him from making the ultimate decision that was his. However, I do have a lot of survivor's guilt. It's not natural for you to lose a child. It's not natural for your child's heart to stop beating before yours does. And then I felt guilty because I wasn't there to go help look for him. But here's that that uh, butterfly effect. Let's say I can reverse time and go back in time and be there to look for him. Would that truly have changed the outcome? Or would it have just changed the different guilt? I would have felt guilty for not being able to find him and being in that place. And so I think a lot of times we have to allow ourselves to have a little bit of grace. We have to forgive ourselves for the things that we can't control. And I love to talk about suicide prevention because I believe there's so many people out there that are hurting, even pre-COVID, that want so desperately to talk about it without feeling like there's something wrong with them, but they're afraid of being judged. You know, Nick, if, if you were to tell me that you broke your arm or you, God forbid, knock on wood, had cancer or something was wrong with you, you wouldn't be embarrassed to talk about it. But if you were, if I were to tell you, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got depression and anxiety, which I do, and um, I th I'm thinking about ending my life, which I'm not, you know, why am I so embarrassed to tell you that my, my brain's broken or I'm just not functioning the way I know I, that I should be functioning? So um, that's pretty much the long answer to your very short question is I'm just, big on wanting to raise awareness so people can destigmatize what they think may cause suicide. Mm -hmm. There may be some outlying factors that add to the mental illness, but at the end of the day, it is a mental illness. And I'll, I'll leave you with this last comment on it and we can diverge even further into it. Um, I apologize. I thought I had shut off my notifications, okay. but they're still popping through. Um, is that the people who take their life, the people who want to end it all, and I also mentioned this in my book, don't want to die. They just lost their purpose in life. So it's about finding your purpose. The whole point of me writing that portion in my book is I want people to understand that everybody has purpose. Some people go through their entire life knowing what their purpose is, knowing what they want to do. They've got this burning desire and they just have to you know, execute it. I always knew I wanted to be a teacher from a very early age after my dreams of becoming an astronaut quickly died out for different reasons, but I, uh, the second type of person are the people who come into, uh, come into that fruition. They come into what they realize they were supposed to do and maybe through a series of life events and then they find their purpose. And then there's a select few or maybe a select many that go through their entire life, not knowing what their purpose is, never really try to find their purpose or fly under the radar and then they end up losing their battle with their mental health because they just feel like they're better off not being part of this world than being part of it. Thank you for sharing that, that part of your story. Thank you for um, making sure that other people are aware and have shed some light on this. This is actually something that's very close to me. I've not shared this with you yet, um, but it's very close to home. Robin Williams is, is a personal fa family member friend. Uh, um, my uncle actually started Robin Williams' career. He snuck him on laughing uh, many years ago back in the 70s, and they were roommates in college, him and Christopher Reeves, the guy who played Superman. And uh, my uncle and him both died in the same week. So uh, most yeah. people know who Robin Williams is and know that he died of suicide and that he, he seemed super happy and everything was okay right mm -hmm. right, right before. Um, and then my, my mother's sister committed suicide. Um, same scenario where her life, if you're looking at people looking from the outside in would have never have known because her life seemed phenomenal. I myself uh, was at the stage of, uh, I was once a homeless veteran and had um, all kinds of uh, uh, uphill battles in my life at an earlier stage and thought that um, 
I had wanted to die and was very close to, to actually doing it. Um, and later in years, somebody told me something very similar to exactly what you said. And it still drills home today. It, um, she said to me, because it was, this was a woman, 85 year old woman. She said, you know, I almost committed suicide once myself. And, um, but what I learned when I didn't and through, through therapy was that it wasn't that she wanted to die. It's that she didn't know how to live. And mm-hmm. that's where I was at is I didn't actually know how to live. The, the things that I had been trying were not getting me to where I wanted to do. And everything, it, it seemed like everything I was trying or every door that I opened, I was still being met with so much resistance and it just seemed overwhelming. And it, and it wasn't that, and, and I'm a very capable person, smart person. It was just, I wasn't in the right place at the right, it wasn't the right place at the right time. Yeah. I just needed, I just needed more growing to do. And a lot of people, um, if we just had that, that chance to get, get over that hump. And for me, I did, luckily I did. Uh, somebody bought me a slice of pizza and save my life literally. So, um, and that's kind of where you're at. I wouldn't be, I know that I wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for that person. And right now you're being that person for a lot of people. And we thank you for that. Uh, And uh, that's pretty profound. And I do, uh, I appreciate you being so candid and so open and transparent. And I truly believe that the more transparent we are with people, the more forthcoming they are with their stories. And you really gave me the goosebumps when you mentioned Robin Williams. So every time I've talked about my son, I refer to him as the Robin Williams of the group. He was really good at masking his emotions, and of course, there's always a backstory and all this, all the stuff. And but I'm not embarrassed as a parent to say my son took his life. It's not a reflection on me as a parent. Of course, there are better choices I could have made. It doesn't come with an instruction manual. Um, but there's also better choices he could have made. He, being a kid didn't come with an instruction manual. So he, you know, the stigma attached to suicide. And, and I'm going to brag about Logan to show you the type of stigmas I'm talking about. Amazing kid. So Logan was an AB honor roll student since the second grade. In the fourth and fifth grade, he was nominated by his by the students in his class as the and he got the citizenship award. And so I one time was excited for him and proud, but I remember holding the award up and I asked him, I said, I'm really proud of you, but why don't I see this behavior at home? Like every he he turned it on and it was so good for everybody else, but at home it was like you know, the battles. And what I realized too, is that these kids have to release it somewhere. You know, if you watched him when he was younger, you would have said, oh my gosh, your kid's like the perfect behaved child. And at school, he didn't act out. So he just, he was comfortable with me. I was, I was his punching bag almost to a certain extent because they got to release somewhere, right? They've got this pent up tension and stress. Um, But it wasn't all bad, but just Moving forward, so he was awards, and he would, you know, AV honor student, and then, of course, ninth grade rolls around, and I said, Logan, you are not going to be that kid that flies under the radar, because he wasn't into sports. He was more of a science and nature kind of kid. I said, I don't care if you're the water boy. I don't care if you're working for the school newspaper. Just find your niche. Do something, and the biggest compliment I got from strangers and people who knew me well when he was a baby was how articulate he was, so I threw out there that you should be, you should get to speech and debate. And he's debating with me on why he should not do speech and debate. I'm like, dude, you're losing this argument. Like, <laughs> I, and I love it. And I, for a moment, I said, did you just stop to think for just one second that you actually might like it? Mm. And he looks up and he's like, well, no. And I said, do me this one favor. And I'm so glad I had this conversation with him before he passed. I said, if I can teach you one thing as your mother, if I can ever teach you out of all the life lessons and the guru uh, bright ideas that I think I have as a parent is don't ever close a door before seeing what's on the other side of it. I don't care if your friend is trying to sell you the 15th product. I don't care if your friend is trying to show you their 15th invention. Mm. You always say no but never say no to an opportunity. So I dragged him, literally dragged him with his feet, brought him to the high school library, left him. I was that typical mom, bye, embarrassed him in front of everybody. He comes out, pick him up. He's got this manila folder in his hand, and he puts it into my lap, and he goes, I need you to sign these papers. And I go, so does that mean you're going to do it? And he goes, yeah, I think so. And it was, it was like he had found his people. It, the, the light just lit up his face. He was excited again about um, school. And uh, he had a whole new group of friends that he connected with. And 
they, he was such a morale booster for the team that they were going to make him the morale officer the next year, which is crazy because we didn't know how badly he was hurting on the inside. Mm. He got warrior of the month because he went to his high school was the warriors and that was um, awarded to him by one of the teachers and he didn't do drugs and alcohol. I've got toxology report to prove that he wasn't bullied. And so I'm saying all these things because people tend to think that the people who take their life or turn to drugs are the people who come from broken homes or they've been bullied or they just didn't have a lot of friends or they were just um, maybe on the off end of the spectrum. And I'm not, not saying those aren't here. outside. Factors. Sometimes it is, but it's not the only. It's not always the case. Right. And on paper, Logan was the perfect child, and he still ended up taking his That's life. Fair. So it's about just learning the warning signs and opening up those conversations because talking does save lives. Absolutely. And and uh, <laughs> talking does save lives. Yeah. Um, so it, I, I didn't go back to college. You, when you met me, I, I was uh, graduated high school. That was it. Um, and I, had, I went back to school in my 30s. And... Um, graduated i want to say when i was 33 um and i went to broward college in florida atlantic university and just just still on on the, on the same topic um what i used to we we had a high high-rise parking garage and have to take an elevator but it was an open always had to look down eight stories waiting for the elevator and I, I just thought it was what an unsafe place for students this is not students shouldn't have to stand here every day for all the the weight that students have to go through every day to stand sure. here and just to, to and and sure enough th- a few people had attempted it in the time that I was at school in the sa- exact same spot because it's just yeah. it's one of those places like you say oh this is it's just not it's not a good looking it, it's not a comfortable place to stand and wait for the elevator because there's no railings it's just a drop and, the enticement um, exactly exactly and it's not something that you'd even should even want to think about whether you're in a great mental health space it's it looks that way and sure. um we had there made national news there was two young haitian uh, uh gentlemen help save a guy and that guy eventually graduated they were able to to catch him um you know and I won't go any further than that it's just i, I thought it was really amazing that somebody was there to save somebody um, sometimes there's those great stories that happen, but you know, I, I think again, when somebody has, cause it's, well, it's tough. Well, one of the things you mentioned earlier that made me think of this is you, you said you dealt with a lot of resistance and there's this quote out there and it shows the airplane and the airplane can't take off without resistance. Oh, and in order for us to spread our wings and fly, we have to deal with the storms. We have to deal with that kind of adversity because if you've got it easy going your whole life, you will never appreciate when the good moments and the opportunities come along. But there is a video that I would love everybody to look up. I wish I had the opportunity to show it to Logan before he passed. It's um, If you just type in YouTube, it's called The Ripple Effect, E-F-F-E-C-T. And it, it's, it just is the trailer. It's just a five-minute trailer. called. It says The Trailer of the Ripple Effect. And it's about a gentleman, and I won't go into all the details on it because I really want people to see how profound and powerful it is. So get the tissues ready, even if you're a guy. And oh, I he love cry. had I cry. <laughs> off the Golden Gate Bridge mm. and survived. Oh, my. And so now he oh, lives to be this incredible international speaker, and he talks in front of military members, and he talks in gymnasiums at high schools, and He's such an incredible soul, and it was just, he just questions why, out of all the people that jump off the Golden Gate Bridge, why was I spared? And there's, what I have realized through Logan's death is that there is a life and death design, and we're just not meant to figure that out. We're all on borrowed time, whether you believe in a higher being or not, we're all on borrowed time, and that is certain. So just live life to your fullest and reach out to people. I mean, I don't know anybody who's listening right now, but... I, I'm a great listener. I'm, I'm, this is a non-judgment zone. So if you need to reach out to me, I, I'd rather you make that call. Um, but there are so many resources out there. But the best resource you can have is arming yourself with knowledge. You know, looking for the warning signs, knowing what they are, knowing how to act. If someone were to tell you, I'm thinking about ending it all, instead of going, oh, gosh, that really sucks. I'm sorry to hear that. Do, would you know what to say and how to act? So just arming yourself with those kind of, that kind of knowledge is the best resource. 
Um, so one is I, I dropped a link there to to the uh, ripple effect in in the chat. So if anybody wants to take a look at that, and also yeah. I just want to add on top of what you said is if anybody ever feels that they they just need somebody, if it doesn't matter what time it is, reach out to me. Um, you've got my contact, all my contact information. We're both public people, so you can probably easily find us, and and uh, we'll get get out to you. And, and if you can't get a hold of us, keep keep dialing numbers till you find somebody. Somebody will pick up for you. Um, so, I, I, I get, go ahead. Home, if you text home to seven four one seven four one, a lot of people are uncomfortable with calling people or calling a suicide prevention. You can actually text anonymously with um, someone who's a trained professional. So again, that's another great resource. Just text the word home to seven four one seven four one. Nice. See, did not know that. I will keep sharing that. It's in the mm -hmm. it's in the comments below right now as well. Um, so that, that I want to segue um, because I want to know because really you were your you had a tra trajectory before this happened. Like um, you were doing a lot of stuff and I mean amazing stuff. Like everything was. I dare to say you were living a perfect life or better yet, you were living your best life. And yes. then this traumatic experience happened. And I, I, most people um, just don't, they, they don't carry on after that. Or even if they do, it's in some diminished capacity. Um, I just want to throw out an analogy and then I want to let you jump on it. Um, I've heard, so lions when they're hunting can only go three days without food. And if you've ever seen any documentary about a lion trying to catch a gazelle is they are not always successful. Those things are fast. Zebras are fast. Gazelles are fast. Yaks are fast. <laughs> Buffaloes are fast. And they, they, they travel in herds. So they don't, they aren't always successful in hunting game and even eating a rabbit or something like that is not enough to sustain a lion because of the energy that they expend trying to take down big game. Now, if every time they missed, they went and did what a human did, which is just lay in bed, grieve, um, forget, just forget whatever it was they had to do and beat themselves up. Woe is me. What could I have done? How could I have done this? Um, lions would die. They just would never get back up and hunt again. So they, they, they have this miraculous ability to brush it. Trust me, they're still upset. That I, I've seen it. I've seen lions upset with themselves for not, but they still have to get back up and hunt. And um, what I've recognized and what I've seen for is for the ability, like I've seen you take control of the situation to the best of your ability. I've seen you incorporated in your life. It's not like you moved on in any way. You evolved, transcended and grew like, like an Oak tree and your, your trajectory I think is even higher than it was now. And, and that's because you have a wider base now. Um, so I, I just want, what, what is, what has been the, the recovery um, to allow you to, to, grow to, to grow and regain your trajectory like what what has been some of that for you to to pick back pick up the pieces and and um continue to grow and well, and that, also to continue to be a mother because it just if you guys don't know she she has another ch child who is also amazing and wonderful too and thank you i appreciate the fulfilling com compliments uh, you know we all look for those you know, affirmations and validations. And I appreciate Lions. you saying that sometimes we don't see what other people see. So I, I want to thank you for that. It's you're talking about the pity party. Mm -hmm. Everybody's entitled to have the pity party, the lion, the tigers, the bears, the gazelles and, and us. Oh my, I, I have, I, I allow myself to have the pity party. It's okay not to be okay. True. It, you just got to get back up and dust yourself off. And I was faced with two options after Logan passed, and he passed on May 14th, 2019, and if anybody wants to Google and look up his story, if you typed in Logan Jones, Greer, South Carolina, you're going to pull up his story, and so it was a very short time ago, so with that being said, I had two options, I can crawl into a hole, completely justified, and wither away, and be no good to anyone, including my daughter, and my, my I call them my bonus children, I have three older stepkids that are like my own and be no good to my husband and everybody else in the world. Or I can take such a tragic event and turn tragedy into triumph. 
and become a light in such a dark topic. And everybody's personality is different. For me, even with the teaching, it's so fulfilling to me to just bless it forward to others, to just help others. To I didn't write a book for the attention I didn't or for the money I did it because I want to be able to impact lives and be that domino that I talked about earlier in the conversation that has that ripple effect in a positive profound way and, and so I don't realize how many lives I may have changed or how Logan's story may have saved lives in the process and I may never know but just because I may look like I have it all together doesn't mean I do I I'm, I think of myself as a hot mess I look in the mirror and I I just admitted this to my husband several days ago I want so badly to see the person in the mirror that everybody else sees from the outside I look, look at myself as someone very tired and very sad and I feel like we are our worst critics and so everything is mindset it doesn't matter if it's being a parent if it's in business it doesn't matter if you're going to school it doesn't matter if you're a network if you're in a or marketer, if you are a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, if you're a janitor in a school, everything is mindset. It, you know, it's it's they say it's 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. And the reason why over the last five years I have delved in, into personal growth and development is because the only person I'm trying to be better than is the person I was yesterday. I have to keep my mindset. I, I have to keep a positive outlook because I'm no good. No one wants to be around a negative fancy. But a lot of depression is also stemming from not just COVID, but a lot of people live behind the, the social media reel, right? So you go to my Instagram and like you said, I'm traveling all over the place and my life looks great. And yes, I was enjoying my life, but it wasn't always peaches and roses. It's the, I think it's the thief of joy is the, or the comparison of joy is, what's the expression? Oh, it's, uh, I, I know somebody knows Apathy. it. Um, well, the, uh, the compare, I think it's the thief of joy is the c- comparison. Or when people try to compare themselves to other, I know somebody listening knows this quote. Right. If you guys know, but, if you know, guys know this, this analogy, please drop it in the, the comments. I'm also going to look it up. My little school is off key here, but I, I don't know how I do it. I really take it one day at a time after Logan passed. People is comparison. Kept saying take it. one day. The comparison of what? The, the thief of joy is comparison. Yes, thank you very much for getting my squirrel back on track there. <laughs> I, I'm no one special. I'm someone who has the same emotions and blood running through their veins. The best way I can explain mental health to a child or to someone who truly doesn't understand why someone would take their life is the way I explained it to my daughter when she was 12 and lost her brother. I said, our bodies are so miraculously put together. And I want you to imagine intricate wires running literally from head to toe and kind of like a spark plug in a car. If those connections aren't being made, then something's going to be off. So whether you need medication, whether you need therapy, whether you need exercise, whether you, whether it's the combination, something needs to get those wires to find each other and connect well. So I told my daughter, with anybody with depression, I was trying to not justify my son's actions, but explain what may have put him into that dark place, is that there's a difference between chemical depression and situational depression. Mm. I am severely severely depressed, depressed. and And obviously it's because because my situational um, situation with with Logan, Logan. but there's there's people out there who are chemically chemically depressed, depressed, and that that doesn't doesn't mean something's wrong wrong with you. you. It, it just, just means that the, you're, you're, what, what you're, you're feeling, feeling isn't normal. It doesn't, doesn't mean that, that you're not normal. normal. It's it just, just what, what you're, you're feeling isn't normal. normal. And, and if, if you're, you're a parent, parent you're going to understand this analogy. analogy. When, when we criticize our children for making dumb mistakes, mistakes probably, probably the same mistakes, mistakes we made and forgot that we made them, we tend to say, I don't like your behavior, not I don't like you. You know, it's not the child that's a bad kid. It was the child that made a bad decision. So I always criticize the behavior. So anybody that's suffering with any type of mental illness, whether it's an addiction or anxiety or depression or suicidal thoughts, there's nothing wrong with you. You are normal. What, what you're, you're feeling, feeling isn't normal, and, and there, there is, is a way, way to get through life on a daily basis without feeling like there's a dark cloud over your head. head. And, and I didn't, didn't understand all of the, the depression aspects of that until I started going through that myself, because 
It was, it was a gorgeous, gorgeous sunny, sunny day today. Day. I mean, I mean in, in, in South Carolina, Carolina for a winter day, it was almost 70 degrees. The sun was shining. I can hear the spillover from the hot tub pouring into the pool. I got my husband next to me. My daughter's giggling with her best friend upstairs. Life was great, and I still felt down. And so that's when you have to really kind of just reach out to someone and start talking because there's nothing wrong with feeling that way. You just don't want to sit in that pity party for too long. That's a great point. Um so, uh, okay, my mother decided to text me and let me know there was a big echo. I appreciate that. We heard it. I hope it's not still going. Um, so let's see. Tish said, please accept my condolences. I appreciate your testimony. I'm encouraged by you. Um, okay. Beautiful. Um, I appreciate that, Mom. <laughs> Uh, my so the, those who don't know I, i'm here taking care of my mother i'm in new jersey not taking care of but being 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 a son expanding the time that i get to spend with my mother uh, um in her her 70s and i'm in my 40s and we didn't we missed a lot of time i, I was in the south for 25 years and had even i even lived in in well i lived outside of greenville and anderson for, for many years too so kind of know the south carolina area so i i'm i keep hearing you mention south carolina and i kind of get a little homesick <laughs> You mentioned Broward. I did take maybe two courses at Broward Community College, like back in, I don't even know, 1997. Oh, maybe. wow. You're a Seahawk. <laughs> We're both Seahawks then. What, you didn't even know that. What the heck? I, I didn't know. Yeah, I went to FAU. It's but and, and Broward Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, exactly. That, it's a... Uh, uh, we, we, exactly. The, the paths just keep crossing um, for, for many, many, many reasons. Um, so one of the things that we do here at Awaken Aware is really want to get down into what your routine is like. And because um, you, you, you mentioned earlier that actually I want to throw something out there that, that actually um, I studied entrepreneurship. Uh, I took an entrepreneurship class while I was in uh, um, B school at uh, Florida Atlantic University. And I was lucky enough that like, this is kind of a weird story is the professor that I had taught at Harvard university, but he moonlight because he graduated from FAU. He would fly in twice a week and teach a class <laughs> at FAU, but actually it was taught at Broward college. So at Broward college, I got to get, have a Harvard level class in entrepreneurship. And the whole point of that was really was to get down because the, that I took everything that this guy said seriously and I want to learn everything he said. And what was interesting is his very first lesson. Well, the very first thing that he said um, was not about stocks, bonds, wasn't about Warren Buffett. It was plain and simply. He says, if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to get depressed. It's hand in hand. They go hand in hand. There's no entrepreneur. I mean, maybe there's some entrepreneur somewhere who didn't get depressed, but he said, you're going to have to deal with depression. Um, and he, he said that the thing that he, he recommended and that he found that was most um, powerful is to recognize that you're going to be in depression, that it's going to happen. And if it does happen is for you to not go to your lowest bottom, whatever you can do to, to, oh man, I hate to say flatten the curve because that's what it, that's what he said, but this was years before it was ever used in COVID because um, it's an economist term is to flatten the curve. And that's what he said is basically if you overeat, if you oversleep, if you over drink, whatever the those things are is if you can minimize it in any kind of way, when you come out of your depression, you will be ahead of everybody else. And that was what he was very big on and is to recognizing that is whatever you can curve, whatever you can stave off. Um, you know, if it's just getting outside for five minutes to get some vitamin D, whatever it is that's going on for you is to find that thing and just incrementally work on. And as you flatten the curve, you come, you know, also you tend not to slingshot out of it because sometimes we come out of, depression feeling great all of a sudden having all your energy back and all like oh i'm out and then you try to take on everything all over again and then you find yourself going back into depression because you've taken on too much so if you're able to flatten the curve you kind of come out and you kind of walk out dust your shoulders off and keep going and i for that to have been the first lesson in a harvard level business class i mean the, the Harvard people amaze me all the time. I have some friends that went to Harvard and it's just, it, the, 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 the things are is the people that they meet and that the way they deal with information 
is completely different than the, <laughs> than the way that the oh, average sweet. person thinks. And I, I can value that. And that's one of the reasons why I listen to them. And, re, and of course, so the, right after starting my business, the, the thing that happened, I went into deep depression because I had quit my job. I was living paycheck, uh, pennies to pennies. And I mean, everything counted, money counted, where I was at, how I ate, how I slept. Everything was, was now had to be, I had to draw every piece of blood out of every stone just to make it through the week. And I'm not just talking about money, but like, like uh, Amanda said earlier, you know, uh, entrepreneurs are the only ones that will work uh, 80 hours a week just so they don't have to work 40, you know, and that's very much how I was. Um, so I asked you about your re- routine. Um, I'm very big and I really want to know what your morning routine is. Like, what do you do? from the second you wake up now, cause listen, I know you do a lot. Like, the, the, you know, I realize a lot of it's just looking through social I'm media, but you get a lot done yeah, on social media. So. <laughs> I'm laughing because my husband's listening in probably going, Oh gosh, I see what this one's going to say. Uh, cause he, he is so very routine, but one thing I want to touch on that you said is everything is an ebb and flow. Mm-hmm. And well, a lot of times people think that when they, Go into, into a, a business, business, even if it's something as simple as a direct company. Yo, everybody in the body, they think that entrepreneurship is like this, when really it's like this, and looping around and crashing and coming back up, and, and it's exactly the same way. I mean, everything ebb and flow, and I know life's going to find a way to kick in the teeth, and I hate to discourage people, but if you haven't been kicked in the teeth yet, brace yourself, it's coming. Mm. And it just, that's just the way it is. And so I, I am not really uh, as routine as I should be. I'm not going to admit to being a very routine person. I, I do better with structure, so I'm getting better at becoming more routine. Um, I'm going to brag on my husband for a quick moment because uh, he is the epitome of routine. So he graduated from one. My point. He, came he came from very, very humble beginnings. beginnings. His, His father, father still lives in the same trailer park in Madison, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Uh, His, His parents, parents did their best, uh, raised them, him and his sister, extremely, extremely well, and in the sense of being, becoming, becoming good, good abiding citizens. citizens. And, and, but they just really didn't have a lot of money to scrape together. And through that, my husband knew if he was ever going to go to college, he's got to figure out a way to pay for it. So I promise I'll answer your question directly in just a moment. Perfectly fine. But what I want to what I, this is a community. What I want to drive home is, what's up? I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, I said this is a community. So uh, what, what, what's supporting you as part of your morning routine? Absolutely. And, and he, he keeps, keeps me on track, track for sure. sure. So he, he figured out a way. He got into West Point and graduated, put in five years of active duty, joined the um, world of, you know, I'm trying to think of the word, the word in here. Uh, joined, joined the civilian, civilian world is what I was looking for, for but, but still stayed in the Army National Guard. Guard. To this date, he's, he's lieutenant, lieutenant colonel in the South Carolina, Carolina Army National Guard. Guard. But, but he's, he's had it ingrained in his brain to get up at a certain time, time get in his morning run, and, and then he's, he's got, got his routine. So he gets up at 5.15, he's at the gym by 5.30, he runs his four to five miles, then he showers and is off to work, whether it's at home or at work, and then... He does, he does his daily, daily stuff, stuff and then, and then he, he comes, comes home at that certain, certain time. And so I love his routine because it keeps him accountable. accountable. You know, does, does he, he want to get up at 5 15 in the morning? No, but he knows that if he doesn't get it in, then he'll feel like crap the rest of the day. For me, the best thing I can tell you about my routine is I definitely wake up every day with gratitude because I know that every day we wake up. It's It's another day to start start over. We are granted 365 opportunities every single year, 366 if it's a year. And so I feel like we really need to just wake up with gratitude. So the second I put my feet down, I say thank you with two feet. Uh, That's when I'm able to get myself out of bed. I hate to admit, sometimes thinking your own boss is not the greatest thing because then you make your own hours. Sometimes that's really good too. I make myself go to the gym not to stay in shape, but because it's good for my mental health. And the one thing that people will probably giggle at is I've become very routine with making my bed. So I figured if I can just prove to myself that I can do something consistently for 30 days, 
then I can move on to something else and bring something else into my routine for 30 days. So every day, no matter what my day looked like, no matter how big of a hot mess I was or whether I was on cloud nine, I woke up and I would make the bed. And after about 21 days, it created that habit. So if I ever got out of bed and didn't make it, I would be looking back at the bed going, feeling guilty because I knew that I was supposed to do something. So I knew I was capable of of doing something consistently for 30 days. So if you can't get up and do something as small as making your bed for 30 straight days, how do you expect to be successful in business? It's all about just having those daily habits and being consistent. I am consistent with affirmations. I am consistent with, oh, geez. Routine. So it's not on a schedule. <laughs> hey, it can be <laughs> twice a week a or once a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I I'm very structured in the sense of in my household. So even grow, growing um raising my children, I didn't care if they ate before they showered or showered before they ate as long as it was done by a certain time. Bedtime's always been at a certain time. We'd have quiet time at a certain time and so I was very routine with them more so than myself and so I'm a work in progress since Logan's passing I have allowed myself to use for not doing certain things during the day and consistent and you can have excuses or results you can't have both and even though Logan is a good reason to want to stay in bed all day at the end of the day it's still an excuse and I'm not going to get any good results out of that so just yourself a little bit of grace try to come up with some sort of routine i probably need my husband help with this by getting up at a certain time and getting to the gym at a certain time this i know it gets done on a daily basis but that's one thing that i do struggle with so i am human like everyone else so i think there's the actual so i believe that everybody has a different sleep pattern than everybody else Uh, because i know mine is completely different than and um after studying uh uh, einstein tesla you know people who accomplished a great amount in the time that they were alive um and then reading some books on time management from harvard professors um and also um reading tools from titans by uh, tim ferris is a guy who I, i mentioned quite often um who did 10,000 hours of interviews with the most successful people on the planet and looked for their common denominators in their routines. And I, I got to tell everybody what the number one thing is for successful people. This is what all successful people do. It's one thing. It's one simple thing. This was the common out of all the most, I'm t- talking about billionaires, all the millionaires all do the same thing. They get up and they make their bed. That's it. They make their bed. That is the the common, the most common thing that every successful per- people do is they make their bed. So if you guys are just getting out, leaving the bed a mess, I'm tell you what, you you got you got some steps to work on. Um, but yeah, like I, you, you said, some amazing things, especially in the okay, built the habit of doing it, and that it, it took me a while to build the habit myself um, uh, for for making the bed. Um, it's another thing that I added actually was after getting that habit of making the bed was not, not just brushing my teeth next, but brushing my teeth with my left hand. People have heard me share this one before Uh, I'm right-handed, but activating the left hand and brushing my teeth with my left hand was, was um, something that gets the mind going. Um, I'm going to throw another one out there. This one is, it's been a struggle for me is some form of exercise. And this is not, if you're going to the gym, great. You don't, you can skip this one, but it's, it's within those er, first early waking moments of, of, uh, you know, first 20, 30 minutes of being awake is to do some form of exercise. And it can only be, it, it can be a minute. It doesn't have to be, this is not a full workout. This is just to get your blood flowing and there's all kinds of research in this as to why this is uh phenomenal if it's just five push-ups 10 jumping jacks a one minute plank whatever it is that's comfortable for you to keep you know keep still keep your peace in the morning but there is tons of research where this is the the key um the other with the psychology of making your bed is you've accomplished something you set out a goal to do something and you accomplished it first thing in the now if you're attracting to yourself um you mentioned the butterfly effect if if you're attracting to yourself from the very start 
for the, what the rest of your day could be like. If you want to accomplish things, well, start out small and make accomplishments, and that can be in your morning routine. Um, I, heard, I mentioned you, you heard you mention that you go to the gym pretty regularly, so uh, I'm interested in that because I've seen some pictures of you where you are super, super lean, and you changed like in a short period of time and got like super muscular, super lean, and then started doing competitions, uh, uh, fitness competitions, and I was like holy crap this is on top of everything else like it was like not like yeah i'm like i'm sitting here scrolling at 6 a.m 7 a.m and i'm like damn i must i need to get to the gym because if she can do all that she's doing and i'm just i'm just struggling like you made me feel bad about myself uh, <laughs> not, not real no you just reminded me that i need to get back on my own game um but tell yeah. tell me what, what's what's your workout routine looking like or or not just your routine but how regularly going to the gym? What, what are the, some of the things that you're doing to support yourself fitness-wise? So before I touch on that, I was thinking while you were talking, and I forgot to add that reading and listening to audios is, a, is part of my routine as well. And I've got to get back into that routine because I did fall out. It takes three weeks to develop that habit of anything, and it takes two days to break a habit. So when I tell you I've read a book, chances are I didn't actually physically read a book. I, chances are that I actually listened to an audiobook because I've always had issues with reading comprehension. Yeah. I've had but the only way to get better at something is to keep doing it. So I had a routine where I forced myself to read 10 pages a day. Like I didn't care what it was. I didn't care how long it took me to read it, but 10 pages a day and listen to a minimum of 20 minutes of audio, whether it was an audio book, whether it was a Jim Rohn, whether it was a Tony Robbins segment, whether it was just Googling through YouTube, uh, motivational movies or motivational quotes or motivational speeches, just 20 minutes of something um, audio wise, I would listen to and read those 10 pages. But um, routine with jam. So I'm the biggest junk food junkie out there. I do like Fruity Pebble cereal. I do love Twinkies. I love eating Buckeyes at Christmas time. And I just because you may be thin doesn't mean you're healthy on the inside. So I grew up with a very fast metabolism. And I started going to the gym when I was 32. I was going through a divorce at the time. And, and I realized how getting my endorphins moving was actually making me feel better. So when I turned, oh gosh, I want to say it was like 36 or right, around between 35 and 37, right towards the end of my schooling, my friend who was a personal trainer at one of the gyms I was going to said, did you ever think about competing? And I was like, well, no, not really. And I, I enjoyed lifting that more than I did cardio. I, I'm not, that's why I said that's I awesome. walked the other day. I'm not much of a runner. If I've got a stitch in my side, I know it's mental. You push through it. Um, I'm a big fan of David Goggins. You know, if you've ever read his book, oh, he's a beast. is by far, Can't Hurt Me is by far my favorite book. A lot of people go, when they when you talk about what's your favorite books, everybody says Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Grant Cardone's 10X Rule. Mine is Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. That man is on a whole nother level. But I, I am the type of person where I get a stitch and I'm like, why would you keep running? Like, <laughs> yeah, so he's, I he's, end he's heavy, on level. heavy lifting and there's, there is a myth out there that heavy lifting will make women bulky. No cupcakes will make you bulky, not heavy lifting. So I did it for two reasons. One, I wanted to prove to myself that I could. And two, I want to get my body in the best shape it's ever been after having kids. And I thought it would be easier. And as I said the word thought, it would be easier to maintain once I got to that level. It is not something you can maintain. Your body cannot physically hold that kind of routine when it came to eating. And if you don't develop this healthier lifestyles and choices, then you kind of go back to where you were. So I didn't go back to where I was after competing, but I'm definitely nowhere near where I was lean muscle and, and fat content wise. I love to drink wine. That is my vice. And there's a lot of sugar in wine. Mm, so I had to carve out wine. I had to make sure I had my gym bag packed in my car because the gym was across the street from the school I taught at. So that was part of my routine. I went straight from the school to uh, the, the gym. My husband was wonderful about making sure dinner was on the table those nights, knowing how important it was for me to get that workout in for my mental health. 
And I just really stuck to what I told myself I was going to do. I had to prove it not to everyone else, but I had to prove it to myself. I put on my Facebook that I was doing a competition on this day, and I did that not to show off about what I was doing. I did that to hold myself accountable because then when I was at school and they had in the teacher, whatever, the monthly teacher luncheons, and they had a whole entire table full of junk food and sweets, when someone saw me go to grab something, they can smack my hand, say, what are you doing? Or I'd be embarrassed to walk towards that table because I promised myself I wouldn't. So it's just about keeping yourself accountable because at the end of the day, when you lay your head on the pillow, it's your conscience you're going to sleep with. Mm. And it's it's about having integrity. No one knows whether you did the right or wrong thing, but you do. And I knew that if I cheated, I knew that if I did the wrong thing, that ultimately the result was not going to be what my goal was. And my goal was to get to that stage and be the best version of myself. And I did. I had fun. The camaraderie was fantastic. I thought everybody would kind of be, you know, nose in the air and sizing you up. But there's, it was such a supportive culture of people back there because we all knew how hard it was to get to that level. My kids were in the audience, so they got to see their mom accomplish something totally amazing that she said she said was going to do. So just being a men, uh, uh, not a mentor, but being um, a role model for them to show them when you when you set a goal, you do whatever it takes to reach it. Um, I bless them for dealing with me because I was carb de- deprived. I was wine deprived. and um, But yeah, I ended up doing two competitions that year. I came in fourth place for Masters over 40 uh, or maybe it was Masters over 35. The second competition I did, I came in second out of seven girls in Masters over 40 and an open. I became nationally qualified. And then my third competition that following spring, I came in fourth place again. So I was just excited I didn't have to come home with hardware. I was excited that I was able to accomplish something that I set out to do. And it was more of a a boost for me because it gave me the belief that I can do it. A lot of times people don't accomplish their goals and their dreams because they don't believe they can do it. They we were we were all born to win, but we were programmed to lose. And somewhere along the way, whether it was a childhood friend or a coach or a teacher or a parent or a sibling, someone was your dream stealer. And we grow up with these limiting beliefs that we can't do certain things. And it's their, it's really other people's beliefs and they put their beliefs on you thinking just because they can't do it doesn't mean that you can. And um, I know that was kind of the long answer <laughs> to your no, question, this, but it, 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 yeah. you, you know, it, 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 the payoffs and the details. And, and especially for so many different people to, to find something that they need to relate from or to relate to, 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 you know, like we learn through exposure than through identification. So the D we love the details. Um, that's why, that's why we're, we're doing this. Um, I, but it made me think of an analogy a couple times that you spoke have made me speak of this, think of this analogy, um, that a plane is never on course. Once it takes, once it takes off, it is being blown around in the wind. It does not. Uh, uh, most people just think it's just flying straight to where it's going. That's actually not the case. It's it's completely off course all the time because it's right. just being all over the place. And what the pilots are doing is constantly adjusting it back to where they're going, and they're having to make these little adjustments just to keep it heading towards and then they eventually make really all, all the the flying is done when they are taking off and landing the rest is just these little uh, course adjustments but that's kind of what our life is like you know and, and and recognizing that we may set out to do one thing and then recognize you know uh, um you can do a lot and um you can uh, uh fill your life up with all kinds of things small things big things little things um, and you have filled up your life and, and accomplished so many things. And, and I'm sure you, you'd never intended to, to do many of the things that you've accomplished so far at not only at such a young age, um, but at different stages and at different times. And that, that's a, a, um, a testament to, you know, your willpower and, you know, cause, cause again, these weren't things that you said that you were going to do when you were 16 and 15 and that you were checking off a list. These are yeah. things that have come up and you're like, man, I can, I can do that too. I can accomplish that. And, and I think that's absolutely amazing. So after accomplishing all these things, still young, retired, 
And um, what's next? Like what? What? Like you, you? You've written a book, become a number one best-selling author. I'm sure you got a, 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 if not another book, but a few more other books. And and you still have uh, uh, business things going on. And um, like you're just a force to be reckoned with. So, so now I want to know what's next. What? What? What's what's on the horizon in the, in the next year? The next two years? You're not. I. I, I don't want to just hear that. You know, I'm going to take one really long vacation or something like that, and then just <laughs> sip, sip sip wine by the 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 the, the uh, trickling hot tub every night for the next forty fifty years. What you got next? What, what's going on next? I my my biggest vision here is to just use whatever platform I can to keep speaking life into people. I want people to step out of their comfort zone, whatever realm they're in right now. I didn't plan on doing all those things like you mentioned. It just kind of developed or saw opportunities and just went for it because I figure worst case scenario, I fall on my face, I get back up. I mean, I've, you look at all the big pe- people who are CEOs and billionaires, they, they failed. That's what the only way to, to really fail is to quit but they failed and kept failing kept failing until they finally succeeded yes and it is about didn't get back up my uh the company the direct sales company ended up merging recently with a really another massive direct sales company and they deal with health wellness and beauty products which is right up my alley because i modeled um for for six years in miami i've got over 25 years of experience with fashion and beauty and over 12 years experience with fitness so i love that two massive giants have come together to create something really big and i've been playing with the idea so i'll throw it out there now with doing another competition the next year because since logan passed i have not eaten well i have not slept well i have not taken care of myself and i don't feel like i'm a really good role model at this moment for anybody on this webinar or my daughter because I I feel like I hold myself to such a high standard that I end up disappointing myself mm. and, and I want to be able to do another competition because I know that it's going to get me on track with eating properly and I'm not talking about the carrots and the celery I'm talking about just getting my meals in right. eating once a day is good for you whatsoever it's going to bring your immune system down it's going to make you sick it's not going to give you your energy which is not going to help your depression. So I'm really excited about the products that this company um, has has been selling. If you're going to eat a shake or drink a shake, I wouldn't do it more than once a day just because yeah. it's still processed. It's a meal replacement. I had to drink. Right. It is a meal replacement, but don't get so hung up on the meal replacements that you don't actually eat a right. real meal. So I had to eat while I was prepping for competition five to six times a day. It was all macroed out, measured out. My coaches, I had professional coaches that actually did the, um, not the cooking for me, but just the meal prep as far as like what I need to be eating and when I need to be eating it and how much of it I need to be eating. So my, I was really good about my breakfast, my lunch, and my dinner. My mid-morning snack was challenging for me because I taught second grade, and that was during my reading time. So I thought to myself, how am I supposed to sit there and eat an eight-ounce chicken breast with some cold green beans while I'm trying to take a 20, take care of 22 second graders? And then my mid-afternoon snack, I had to drink another shake because I was trying to figure out how I was going to be able to eat another meal in between trying to tackle 20 different tasks and meetings for meetings. So uh, I really am looking forward to building those two businesses I, on my, if you don't mind me plugging this in there. Please. So on my, <laughs> on my, I don't want to throw the companies out there, but I would love to just say that if you are interested in knowing the direction I'm going in on Facebook, on my Facebook and on my Instagram, I have a link. It's my link tree and it's a link to how to get in contact with me through all my social media outlets. The first link is, um, something I'm dabbling in about how to teach people have an online presence because a lot of our businesses are moving online and COVID gave us a violent shove Mm. into building online. And when I was, I still am part of this travel industry. We are so belly to belly. We're all about the travel parties and the two on ones and the coffee shops. And we're just not really able to do that right now the way we would like to. And I feel like there's over 200 industries that would really that do benefit from building online businesses but a lot of times we don't know how to do that Mm. so i'm now part of a marketing company that incorporates an ai technology which which is an artificial intelligence technology it's fully integrated automated 
Um, there's 11, technically 11 things that go into building an online business that I had to learn about. It's having the social media market marketing content. You've got to have web pages and landing pages. You've got to have retargeting ads, Google Analytics, SMS, CRM, SEO, web pages, blog spots. And my head was spinning because I was not tech savvy and I have the time, but I don't have the patience. There's a lot of great platforms and companies out there that you can research, that you can look into, and they're all great. But then you have to pay 11 different platforms, research 11 different platforms, and hope that they all communicate and integrate well together. So what this AI technology does is gives you that all in one platform for you to be able to build your business. So it doesn't matter if you're in real estate, it doesn't matter if you're a network marketer, it doesn't matter if you own a yoga studio, if you're doing what Nick does, it's just a way to gain leads, make those connections, build those relationships and have a a funnel to where you can start communicating and reaching the people who are looking for you because just because I'm selling health and beauty doesn't mean that you're going to want to buy health and beauty but you might be interested on the travel thing um, so I've just got different tabs there that just connect people to me um, so I'm excited about the products that are coming out with this new company and I'm absolutely excited about helping people grow their business online as I'm growing mine as well, because we all need to have that slight edge. We all need to find a platform so we can be able to get our stories across to people. I want to hear from other people. I feel like we all have a powerful story to tell and it's so deep inside you. And I think it was Tony Robbins that wrote the book, Awaken the Giant. I mean, there's such a powerful story inside everybody. So I feel like if you are not doing something big with your life or trying to get your story out there, you're really being selfish because your, your trials and tribulations and your struggles in life are going to become somebody's survival guide. Mm. I may, my story may be tragic, but it might be somebody's survival guide. So moving forward, I'm looking forward to d diversifying myself, to helping people grow their business, to helping people expand their mindset, um, to help people with, with mental health issues and really just being an advocate for those who are trying to make something of themselves in this world and make their mark. Um, so that's pretty much it. I'm excited about the health, the beauty, the wellness, the the technology, um, I feel like we have to evolve to keep up with, with everybody else. Listen, I, I got to I gotta commend you. I, I wanted to tell everybody out there, like it, a lot of people, you want to know how to be successful. Like so many people, oh, how, how do you, how, how, what, what is success? How do we get it? How come it's eluded me for so long? I'm a hard, I hear people, oh, I'm a hard worker, go to work every day. You know, I'm constantly looking for the way up, the promotion, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's how you be successful. Just the way she, first off, if she just laid out what she does, what she's selling in a new business that, and, and knew it inside and out and was able to share it, like that's how you become a success. And then to really be success, uh, successful, Osho, uh, I just posted this the other day. Osho says, um, true masters, um, don't make followers. They make other masters. And so what you're passionate about, you're willing to share it with other people. Um, and then there's the things that you, you mentioned is, as I mentioned earlier that you were talking about resi residual income. Listen, if you want to be successful, you have to have multiple streams of income, passive income, residual income. And there's another thing that is super overlooked to in this day and age. If you want to have your time, you mentioned something earlier where you said that you were time poor, um, and, and maybe time stretched. I'm not exactly sure you said poor. Um, but one of the things is automation. That's the new one today is you have to figure out how to automate your processes if you want to be able to, to have time to live your life, to do the things that a man is doing. And so she is giving, she is offering what we all want, like um, six years ago, oh, has it been six years um, you know, six, seven years ago when I graduated college, the reason that I switched for uh, most people, some people know or don't know, um, I was an engineering science major and an electronics engineer, and I just left that behind almost completely and switched over and got a degree in marketing. And the reason for that is exactly what she's doing is recognize is, is I knew that whatever I was going to do, I wanted to share it with people. I wanted to get passionate about it. I wanted to get passionate about my passion. And in the process of the project that I was working on, I recognized that marketing 
I was passionate about marketing because it allowed me to share and teach other people how to be, to, to, to grow what it is they're passionate about. So it's the exact same thing. Sure. It's like, is, is, is if you recognize, it doesn't matter what you're passionate about. You now have the ability to maximize it to its fullest, to be able to share it with other people, how to teach people how to, to maximize their passions, how to make a living doing what it is they want to do. And yeah, we call that marketing, but it, it, it's not, um, it's not advertising. It, it's, 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 it's <laughs> It's a tool. It's another tool in the belt. It's an enhancement. Mm -hmm. It's not to pull anybody away from their passion or what they're focused on. It's not to um, pull someone away or add anything else to their plate. It's it's just a way. It's a technology and a tool to enhance what you're doing. And you said it earlier perfectly. I'm not trying to grow followers. I'm a leader that wants to grow leaders. I'm looking for the people who are looking for me. Poor stands for passing over opportunity repeatedly. Ooh. And you just learn to step out of your comfort zone to do anything different. You, I mean, you've got to really do something different to have something different. And one thing I'll leave you with, it was one of the best quotes I've ever heard. It was right when I got into entrepreneurship. There's no growth in the comfort zone, and there's no comfort in the growth zone. Your comfort zone is going to equal your, your wealth zone. So every time you're doing something, if you feel uncomfortable, you're on the right track. You can't go back to that comfort zone because then you're never going to have any real change. So whenever I do something like write a book, Break Through Success with Amanda Meyer, or join a, a network um, marketing company, or join a marketing tool that's going to help other people and on, other entrepreneurs grow, I never, I've never been money motivated. No one goes into teaching for that. I've been helping others. Um, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought here. Just helping others step into a light that they so well deserve to be in because I know that we're all destined for greatness. You just have to figure out what your purpose is. So if I can be that light for you or that beacon that pushes you, and I was told if you push people, it's okay to push them as long as you're pushing them in the right direction, then that was my path. So I guess I can sum myself up as being a life coach. I'm not an expert to say in any one category, I'm growing like everybody else. I'm, I'm learning as I'm earning and I'm earning as I'm learning, mm. but I'm looking for people who want to grow with me. And that to me is the most important part about connecting and making relationships. Nice. So I, I see the show's going at an hour, 22 minutes. Um, oh. So if, if I can squeeze, if I can get to keep you for these eight more minutes, we'll do an hour and a sure. half, which I've got one more question and then I'm going to try to take a caller. Mm. So if we can just uh, let, let okay. maybe a caller jump in and see if maybe they got something they want to say. So I'm, I'm going to put the number up now. Uh, don't call in yet, but I'm just going to put the number up uh, so you guys can be ready to dial. Um, so I have the question that I want to ask you is, is there any product in your life? Because I, I write like if looking, this is not something that nor, somebody to ask you. So you might have to just think about it for just a second or maybe, you know, right off the top of your head. Is there any one product that's just making your life easier? And if it is the, the product, say I'm already, if you guys already know the, pro, the product she's talking about, I'm already in on it. And it's, it's, I, I think it's amazing. And it, it's, it's something that, like I mentioned, automating your processes is, is yeah. absolutely, it's the way you gain back your time to actually live your life once you've uh, um, created something to, to, to um, make the passive multiple streams and residual income have to have those. If you want to be wealthy and successful in life, it's not so much, listen, you can find successes in, in small things in your life. So I don't mean to say successful but if you want to be wealthy and you want to have financial freedom and you want to have the freedom and the time you have to automate processes or, or and when we say automate i don't care if you got 20 people working for you if they can do the things for you so you can go take off or you can make money in your sleep you've got to be have processes automated and this is something to help do that but i want to ask you is if you have one product in your life that it was either like life changing, game changing, or to this day is still helping you is the thing. Like, what's that it thing for you? Like, it doesn't have to be a plug for them. I just always look for things that, you know, um, for me, you know, like one is a fan. Like I, I never thought that I would uh, uh, use a, a, a fan because I really don't like the sound or the noise. I felt like it was, but I, I learned it's actually the exact opposite for me than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it helps with my, um, I have hearing sensitivity. Like I, I can, somebody could drop a pin in another room and I'm, I'm irritated. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> on a carpet even, you know, like I'm on that audio sensitive. Um, like I, I can, audios can change my visual stimuli. And like, if I close my eyes and hear certain sounds, I see different colors. I think that I'm not a synesthetist. Like, like that's a, an amazing thing. Um, but it, it's close. Um, so a fan, the white noise helps. And, um, I, I just never knew that. But once I got one and put one in my room and, you know, either air purified or something, it really helps me. And it, it, it keeps me calm, but that, that's just my thing. But how about you? Do you have anything in your life that's really just phenomenal that like you could just say, man, this is, you, you might want to look into this. <laughs> You know, you know, believe it or not, it has something to do with business because I'm such a people person, and I love I love making connections with people. And so the the marketing company that I'm working with is helping me brand myself so I can reach more people. It's helping me build the travel industry and the new health and wellness and beauty uh, products. So what I like about this new uh, technology, this new AI technology called Now Site is it's allowing me now not just to reach people in the health and beauty and build that part of my business and the travel part, but now I can reach out to anybody in over 200 industries. So now I'm not limited to the two industries I'm in. So before I was limited to the health, wellness, and beauty and, and the fitness stuff and the travel, now I'm reaching out to people who own businesses that are looking to just make a, an impact in the world. I'm looking at mom in pop shops and talking with friends that are realtors and talking with people who are financial planners. And so it's allowing me to connect with people on so many different levels and so many different businesses. And it's expanding my mindset as to what else is out there. Not, not just so I, I'm not jumping ship from when I started five years ago. I'm still all in. And for me, it's about just reaching more people because the biggest thing that has made an impact on me is my kid dying. For my son, when my son passed, it really shifted the way I looked at life. Mm. So my biggest thing now is how fast and how many people can I connect to to see where they are in life and where they want to go. Because so many people are praying for an opportunity and they don't know what it is or where it's supposed to lead them. But maybe I could be that tool that helps direct them there. Awesome. Awesome. Cause that, that, that's the truth. I find a lot of people are, are sitting waiting for somebody to come along and say, Hey, look, this is, let me show you how you can make a million dollars. Let me show you how you can get off uh, uh, for, you know, the 40 hour a, a week working for somebody else. Let me show you how I can make your own uh, anything and, or, or maybe you have something in the, but that's, I, I hear it all the time, see it all the time. And I'm like, man, if you just, just take the leap of faith, it's, it's so much better. You know, not only do we have cookies, we have hot tubs and all, <laughs> you know, like, 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 all, we have all the stuff. <laughs> I'm, teach, I'm, I'm teaching my children to, take, to chase their passion, not a paycheck. Mm. And that is the point I've been driving home. For my daughter, she does well in school, but I don't want her to be so focused on school that she stresses herself out mentally. I want her to know school's important, but what's more important than that, than that grade is the effort and the work ethic she put in behind it. Nice. And that's going to go a lot further along in life because she may or may not decide to go to college. She may or not decide to go to network marketing. She may or may not decide to be a CEO, but it's all about the work ethic. It's all about integrity. It's all about having that burning desire and not having those limiting beliefs on yourself. And one thing I'll touch on before we take this call real quick is you, you said it best. It's not money is not the root of evil, the love of money. Mm. So what money does for you is it opens up different avenues. It opens up, it gives you a chance to have the time freedom so you can do what you want when you want without being told when and where and how to do it. And I just grew so sick and tired of basing every decision in my life off time and money. I wanted to live life full time on my terms. And because of I, me being so open minded five years ago, it allowed me to have that time with my family even after my son passed. So I'm eternally grateful for that, for that cross in my path. But I had to be open to receive that blessing because most people will pray for something to come along, but they expect it to come along in the form in which they prayed for when really it may not come that way. So you just have to be open minded. 
quote. Favorite quote, quote of all times, I know I've dropped a lot of quotes, is that the, uh, the, the brain, brain is like a parachute, it only works when it's open. Mm-hmm. So, I, so the, those are great. Listen, I, I'm, I'm very much into the, the parables, the quotables, the, the snippets. The buzzwords, Um, all that, yeah, exactly, and the (laughs) analogies, all that stuff, because those are the things that really, they're the things that that allow me to to pass on the information quickly, shortly, Um, but they're also the things that kind of sink in and become meaningful to me over and over, and I keep relating to them and using them in my life. Um, So I'm going to wait for this caller, uh, but I want to ask you a question while the caller's calling in, is so you've mentioned MLM or multi-level marketing. Um, Most people have seen it or, or heard about it or something about it but you're successful at it so i just 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 tell people like what what's the determining factor of being successful at an mlm is it the mlm that you're working for is it being the right one or is it really about the person that gets behind it and how because listen I, i'm gonna tell you she's successful for a reason and i'm gonna tell you she's a she she's the uh, a boss when it comes to mlm and i'm gonna tell you it's because i think it personally it's because of the the way she approaches and attacks it, it and everything, and maybe that's that is your answer, but I, I don't know. But what what is your answer? Yeah, I was just gonna say you don't have to be extroverted. You don't have to be perfect at your craft. It takes ten thousand hours to be an expert at anything. The two key factors is being coachable. You've got to be coachable and teachable, and you've got to plug into whatever simple system they've already already have in place for you. I learned along my five year journey. Why would you try to reinvent average when you can copy genius? So just, just be coachable and teachable, plug into the system they already put in place for you. Don't try to reinvent the wheel and let it, don't live in that microwave mentality society where you expect success to happen overnight. It's going to take time, but you've got to consistently grow yourself. You've got to read, you've got to listen to personal growth and development, and, and that's really just the key to it. So Nice. <laughs> well, I'm going to say no, nobody's called in yet. So I, that doesn't mean anybody hasn't tried, but, um, sometimes what happens is, is a, a few people will try and then the line blocks up. Um, so I'm gonna give it what, like one more minute here. And if nobody calls in then great, and then we'll just close down the show. Cause yeah. Um, so two quick things. One, I wore my angel, um, earrings for you since you're Nick angel. Oh, um, man. love it. Lo- absolutely. I, I, so I was looking at him. I was wanting like, yeah, man, I, I, I dig that very, very much. Right. So um, looks like, so you got I, your wings. Yes. And I've got to give a huge shout out behind this book to success, uh, success publishing. Uh, they are, they are astounding. They, they are such a remarkable company. And uh, Matt Morris, who's one of my favorite mentors of all time, he uh, owns this publishing company. He's the number one income earner in one of the direct sales companies I'm in. He gave me the opportunity to co-author with him. But I love the step-by-step process and the mentorship and the family ship that they put behind it. Um, it's just it's incredible. So I just want to give a huge shout out to, to Matt Morris and Steve Moreland and Bryson Kaufman and everybody at Success Publishing. I really would not have been able to get through the publishing or the writing portion had it not been for their guidance and uh, their mentorship. So that was huge. Nice. I see. Pay, paint it forward. Remembering the people that helped you on that helped you on the way there. Um, you know, and you, I like the fact that early on in the show, you mentioned mentorship. Um, that's, that's probably one of these other tools that I've, I've often not mentioned enough. Um, how having a mentor and a lot of people don't have a clue what a mentor is, but it, because I, I know I didn't for many years. Um, but it's somebody, it's finding somebody who's actually doing the damn thing like that, that you want to do, or, or it's not, not your best friend is not your mentor, or, you know, it's really somebody who people who make it really want to turn around and help other people. It's just like, I have never, I have not found anybody who is is successful, who does not want to share their success with somebody else. And it's, Uh, it's, you know, so if you don't have a mentor, find one. Um, I, when, when I, before I opened my marketing agency, I read a book called, um, social marketology and uh, as a friend of mine and it wasn't a friend of mine yet but the guy was a professor uh, of marketing at NYU named Rick um, Rick Dragon and I wrote this guy a letter just like the old school people did uh, here's a book that I read and I admired him I wrote him a letter he wrote me back and from that point on he, you know like I would pick his brain and hit him up on on social media and it just turned like 
from watching his processes and what he was doing, I was able to build a marketing agency and be successful at it and live my own life and, and make money and drive the cars that I wanted and live the places that I wanted to live. And, and, um, it was all just from following this guy and what he was doing. And it was just beautiful to, to, like you said, I don't have to reinvent the wheel. I just followed somebody else's genius and it was Mm -hmm. a beautiful thing. And just, just putting myself out there, um, I think it's uh, ha- ha- Think and Grow Rich and um, uh, uh, seven, seven Highly Effective Habits, Stephen R. Covey, um, Dale Carnegie, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And each one of those, I believe they give an instance where somebody wrote a letter to somebody else and somebody came back, like a mentor came back from that. Like, put yourself out there. Like, really don't be afraid to reach out to these successful people because they really want to help you come up. That's, I think it's part of who we, who we are when we reach any level of success. The first thing we want to do is turn around and get more people, bring the people along with us. You know, you look yeah. at all, all the rock stars and all the, the rap stars, man, they got entourages because they're bringing their friends along. They, they want, they want to show that. Well, I don't know if they're trying to bring them up. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> Great. When you were talking about uh, finding routines, so if anybody hasn't read the slide edge, that's that talks about doing the little things and they add up to the bigger things. Mm. Um, and network marketing, a lot of people call them pyramid schemes and it's, it's so not a pyramid scheme, but it's fine. People want to think that, um, I honestly can bypass the person who put me in and I can outrank them and, and I have, and I've made more money than them. So it's not about a pyramid. I've seen a funny meme that showed a bunch of cubicles and they go, no thanks. It looks like a cubicle scheme to me. And, um, <laughs> so Love the 40 40 rule so if you're listening if you're still on your listening the 40 40 40 rule is something that we're taught very early it's we're supposed to work 40 hours a week which is a joke we really work more than that 40 years of our life so we can retire off of 40 percent of what we couldn't even live off of in the first place and i was barely making any money to keep my head above water as a teacher obviously they didn't go into it for the money had a bunch of student loans. And so when I found my purpose in teaching, I realized, like I said earlier, that I was meant to be an educator, just not inside the classroom setting. So I just want to be that leader that builds other leaders and takes them with me because I know that power comes in numbers and there's so many people out there that are hurting that are looking for a better life. Nice. Well, that's a perfect note to finish on because I think you've killed it. I think you've laid out there's so much that people can t- can listen to who have listened to this is this is going to be on youtube the links below um and when you find it please if you found any value in this click the like button and click subscribe if there was any value that you found i know that i found value all the way through this she said some things that i didn't know i wrote down some things the poor i like that um the, the poor acronym um i've put the books that she's mentioned in uh uh the links um, and um, the, the authors. So you'd be able to catch those. Amanda's uh, link tree uh, info is also in the, the, uh, uh, the show notes below. So you'd be able to find her and find all the things, lovely things that she's been talking about. I really highly recommend that you find her and look at some of the stuff she's doing. And if you catch her on social media, check out her Instagram page. Like you, you, you will find um, some uplifting stuff, um, find ways to smile, find ways to be inspired. Um, like that's one of the things, like, you know, I know your name's Meyer, but I'm changing it to Amanda Inspire because it's, it's <laughs> like, I'm, I'm off. I'm like, man, you know, she's working, <laughs> she, she's, she's working, but she's having fun. And that's the way, you know, like, that's the way I think we all really want to live our lives. And a lot of people just don't think it's attainable. And it, you know, like it, it's the things that she's doing. I mean, there's, there's a lot of factors into it, but she, she's doing a lot. And she's accomplishing it. And, and whether or not she goes to bed tired or not, whether or not she goes through depression, listen, that's going to be everywhere. Everybody, you're going to have the little ups and downs in your life. Doesn't matter um, what path you choose. It's not all going to be uh, um, roses and peaches, I think she said. And, um, you know, that's, that's a very South Carolina thing. <laughs> roses and peaches. Brace yourself. You'll get kicked in the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And listen, bring it, bring it on. Like that's, that's really 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 where it's at is bring it on because you know if i if i don't fail i'm not going to learn 
and it's through learning that I succeed. So um, thank you very much for coming on the show. I, I'm sure everybody got great. Ton, ton, I got tons of stuff out of this. And again, if anybody missed any part of it, you'll be able to catch it on YouTube um, very shortly after this. It takes about an hour to upload, but um, you'll be able to find it there. So thank you very much for joining us. Have a wonderful night. Everybody. I am I'm I'm humbled, humbled to be part of the this. Thank, thank you so, so much, much for letting me be a part of your show. show. Thank you and very I think much. It's fantastic what you do. Appreciate it. You're, you're, you are a part of the Awaken Aware community. And as time goes on, you know, like I, I know you and I have got a couple pokers in the fire and uh, we'll be working on some stuff. And, and um, I ho- hope to have you on the show again some other time. I'd be honored. Awesome. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful Thank Great. So that was my friend, Amanda Meyer. I think uh, um, I, I'm super glad that she joined us. It was a really good show. It was a really good uh, conversation. Um, Tish said, thanks, Nick. And thanks, Amanda. Um, my mother, Yvonne, said amazing show. Love, Amanda. Um, this is uh, she, she, she mentioned some really great stuff. So if, if you reach it, like if you haven't read Awaken the Giant by Tony Robbins, like this is a life changing book. Um, if you don't know about David Coggins, like look him up on, I don't care what it is, Spotify, Apple, you will find him. He's got, I think he might even have the number one podcast. This man is absolutely amazing. This might like, he might be, if you want to think about success, and what success is um, David Goggins is probably the most successful person on the planet for just the type of, uh, of accomplishments that he sets himself up to do. Like the, his goals are nuts and he crushes them. He does them. I think he's run across the country. Um, I think he was a Navy SEAL. He's done all kinds of things and met overcome all kinds of adversity. I really highly recommend that you check out his podcast. Uh, I mentioned a book earlier uh, called tools for Titans by Tim Ferriss. It's just a, a, a um, it's a, a conglomerate of all the uh, tips, tools, and tricks from all, from years and years and years of podcast of interviewing the most successful people, including uh, uh, Gog- Coggins. Um, successful, and it doesn't necessarily just me. World strongmen, Olympic runners, Olympic athlete, every kind of Olympic athlete, uh, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, uh, um, Steve Jobs. Like this guy's interviewed. Everybody, well, he didn't interview Steve Jobs. I should, I should take that back, but uh, um, I believe he did interview Tim Cook. So uh, my point was there. Um, anyhow, uh, I really want to thank you guys uh, for showing up and, and making this a wonderful show. Um, and um, we, oh, I, I really want to throw something out again and, and just to reiterate is Tuesday is the solar eclipse. Um, so it's, it's a, a, a lunar, or not a lunar eclipse, but it's a new moon. And a solar eclipse happening Tuesday. So we're going to have some uh, interesting energy from that. I think if you're in South America, you'll be able to see it. But uh, if you're not in, you know, because the the sun's always in the southern hemisphere, it's never in the north, um, is really the only way that you'd be able to see it. So maybe if you're as far south as Florida or Texas, you guys will be able to uh, uh, see it for a brief moment. If not, look, man, there'll be plenty of places to watch it on TV and on the Internet. Um safely anyhow because you don't want to be staring at the sun especially during eclipse you know some people do it but i think it'll be a beautiful thing um and and this uh uh, conjunction that's happening uh people are calling it the christmas star i'm gonna have to do some more research i don't actually believe it's the christmas star um it's where jupiter and saturn align um it's a big deal because uh uh it only happens i don't i'm not know the exact amount but i want to say it's like every 800 years and um, so this is something that we'll be able to see in the sky and it'll look like a star, but it's not. But this is only happening in our lifetimes to be able to see this. It means everybody's going to live who, who's uh, capable of seeing this and it should last for a week um, is special. You know, like I remember seeing Haley's Comet in 80, 86, 87 and just remembering like how special it was like, I really hope that I'm alive to see it again, you know, in 86 years when it comes back around. Um, but this is something that we can all, all take part in and know that was special. Our, our lifetime was special just to see. All right. So again, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I really enjoyed the show and I look forward to seeing you guys in the community. We've been growing the community. Uh, I really want to thank everybody 
for uh, all the likes that you've uh, given the, the Awaken Aware page, the support that you've given the, the, the new page. Um, also, if you uh, check, check it out, there's the Awaken Aware community. It's a group page. Um, feel free to, to share your content. Uh, uh, anything that's conscious has, uh, uh, expands your conscious, or you may f- think of maybe a value to, to somebody else. Um, and again, I want to thank Amanda Meyer for, for joining us tonight. That's it. And, uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful night. I'm going to roll our music. I'm up. All right, guys. Peace, love, light.